Many tourists are now avoiding their favorite summertime destinations because of rising security concerns around the world. ILTV's Aaron Viner sat down with Mark Feldman, the head of the leading Jerusalem travel agency Zion Tours, to ask how this has affected his Israeli clientele. Now let's talk about outgoing Israelis. What are the uh, top destinations this summer? Look, nearby Greece. Greece has overtaken everybody. Greece is the word. Greece is the place. Everybody is going to Greece. Let's be clear. It's inexpensive. It's very nearby. And prices are reasonable. It's still cheaper to fly to Greece for a family of four than to go to a hotel in a lot or the Dead Sea. The prices are less. You may spend more at the duty-free, but you'll get value for your money. And what about North America? Are many, I mean, there are a lot of American Israelis. Anybody heading home for the summer? No, Nor North America is probably Israel's number one destination for shopping, for family, for long tours. That's people that are taking off a long period, okay? They have to go to America for more than a week, 10 days. It's completely supplanted London or Paris, even Berlin. So we've got the long holiday going to North America, and we've got the short holiday going to Greece. Those are the two primary destinations we're seeing. It comes to money. I don't have a lot of money, but I still have to get out of this country. I go to Greece. I have more money. I want to support the U.S. economy. I want to say hi to Donald and Hillary. I go to North America. Well, since you brought that up, I cannot let you go without asking you the most pressing question, which is on everyone's minds. Who's going to be better for Israeli travel? Clinton or Trump? What I tell all of my clients, what I tell all of my people is there's three magic words that will help them when they travel to North America. What about Donald? That stops questioning about what we're doing in Israel. That questions no longer exist. By asking that question, people are finding out either they love or hate. From our point of view, I think we're looking for a, an administration that is proactive, that is not trying to tell us to stop building or to try to put economic sanctions on us. Whether it's a Democratic administration or a Republican administration, I'm not sure. I think that whoever we have is going to be supportive of Israel, and I think there's a bedrock commitment from the people of the United States, from the elected officials of the United States, to support this country. They sure come here in a lot of numbers. We've got delegations coming from the Congress left and right all summer. Look, I think most of our clientele are very afraid to go to Europe. Um, be it Munich, be it Nice, be it London, or be it Barcelona. There's a palpable fear about Europe. Uh, we live in a country where we have attacks all the time, and yet when we go on vacation, we don't want to deal with it. We want to get away. So there's a lot less demand to go to Europe. It's one of the reasons that prices are so cheap. They've never been cheaper to fly from Israel to Europe, okay? Deals we haven't seen prices are at least 20 to 30 percent down because of the fact people just don't want to go. It's not just Israel. All of Europe is complaining about the lack of tourism from North America, from the lack of tourism within their own borders. French tourism has a major decrease. German tourism has seen a major decrease. Um, it's not going to go away. Um, this unease is similar to what we've experienced with our own knife intifada, where people just kept saying, next year in Jerusalem, not this year. What about Turkey, which of course was once one of the most popular tourist destinations for Israelis who were traveling. In light of the recent rapprochement between Jerusalem and Ankara, how are the levels? Look, the president of, of Turkey ha has repeatedly, over many years, called us names, made accusations. Yes, he's turned over, apparently, a new bone, but there's a lot of hesitation. The workers' committees, which are the large groups that take from the electrical thing, have decided, no thank you. The individual has said, no thank you. Ask this question in a year. If we have a year where Turkey doesn't badmouth us, doesn't cause problems in the United Nations, then we may return. But today, between what's going on in Turkey with the terrorism there, the attempted coup last month, nobody is saying, hey, let's vacation in Turkey. It should be a fun place. So how do you advise your clientele who are already abroad and some sort of an incident may have taken place, whether in an airport that they're supposed to travel through or where they're actually staying? First and foremost, 
see something, say something. We're emphatic about letting our people, they have to be more alert. They can't be standing in a long line, be it at Disneyland Paris or at the Vatican in Rome, and just ignore what's going on. This concept of taking selfies of oneself and not looking around is dangerous. I tell them to be more alert. Take a look around, see what's going on, on the plane or around. If you see something, say something. We no longer can just simply live in our own little thing, texting away, oblivious to what's going on. That's the biggest message we're telling people today, wherever they fly, wherever they are, be more alert.